Hi and welcome to this The Tech Geeks video. Today we're going to have a look at um, what do I need to do to configure a uh, TP-Link Amada OC uh, controller or Amada controller. Uh, we're going to actually use the um, OC200. As you probably know, there's several ways um, to manage TP-Link Amada. Um, you can do it with the app on your phone, you can do it with some software download that you can install onto your computer, or you can do it with a hardware controller. Uh, there is also a router with the controller built in as well. The advantage of running the controller is one, it's not linked to your phone or your computer, um, and so they don't need to be running. Now, you don't have to run it all of the time if you install it on a computer, um, but if you're doing things like vouchering or you want to monitor things, then it does need to be run all of the time. Also, what we often do is we uh, change our phones or our computers, um, and some of that config can be lost if we've not got backups. Um, so having a hardware controller can be, in the long term, um, a little bit easier to do. So let me just firstly really, um, run through um, the equipment that I've got so that you can um, see how I've set it up um, before we look at this bit. Um, here. So you can see the OC controller, this is the OC200 there in the middle. All right, um, and I've connected to a switch. This switch is a, a PoE switch that's connected up to the internet. Um, it's not a Yamada switch, so it's not going to be able to be adoptable as we go through that um, process. But the OC200 is PoE powered, so it does need to have a PoE switch to be connected uh, to. Oh, that's the easiest way to do it. And you can see I've connected a whole bunch of access points that we're going to do as well. Um, I think they're the EAP 610s. We've got three of um, those. Um, and um, you'll see that I've connected the port in into the back of the switch where they're getting PoE power. Um, and we've also got an outdoor. I think this is the, uh, it's the EAP 650 um, for outdoor. But it's all going to be controlled there by the OC200. All right, we don't have a TP-Link router uh, in this. Um, I'm just using my normal internet connection, and that's probably often how a lot of people are going to do this. I will just talk to you briefly as we go through. Um, if you are going to have a TP-Link router, some of the settings that you'll um, set there. But the key is this is just hopefully a simple walkthrough of um, how to set up the hardware controller. Now, uh, by default, the IP address uh, for the OC200 and OC300 is 192.168.0253. Now, depending on how your network's set up, you're most likely, if you're just plugging this in where you've got a router to get uh, an IP that's probably not in that range. All right, so what I like to do, so here's some key things. You're going to need to have, as you can see, plugged in uh, to everything in, plugged into the switch. You don't have to have those access points plugged in at the start. Um, and you need to have your computer, I'm doing this from a computer, physically plugged into that same network switch as well. So it's getting the same IP range as all of the devices. Um, I like to use a little download um, called IP Scan. Um, you can grab this um, off the internet um, for free. It will just actually run through and show you all the different IP addresses that are available. Um, and this sometimes is the quickest way. If you're using the TP-Link app, I think it will already find the device um, for you. Um, but just by doing this, I can find out all the TP-Link devices and I can probably find out which one is the controller so I know what IP to put in my web browser. We can see this little uh, ang uh, arrow here shows us there's something we can connect to and I actually can see my first one here is my Amada controller. All right, so all we need to do now is start up a web browser. All right, um, and we're just going to go to that IP address, which was 172.20.21.70, and hit Enter. Now, you may have got a prompt before this that says um, this is not a trusted site. This is just using a self, what's called a self-signed certificate. You're doing this locally. There's no uh, security risk in this. It just means that you've not bought a certificate. You don't need to buy a certificate because it's your device and you can control it. So you can choose advanced, depending on what your web browser says, advanced and proceed to unsafe site. The site is totally safe and encryption is already happening. And then we get to start configuring the controller. So really, really simple. Um, you're going to give it a name um, because we can see this connect later on. Um, we will be able to um, see how this connects up. I'm just going to grab my password manager over this way as well. Because um, I will need this in a moment. All right. So let me just grab those bits so I'm ready to do what I need to do. 
All right, so you can give it a uh, name. You can set your country um, that you are going to uh, be in. Oh, we're in Australia here, and your um, time zone. And we're in plus 10, so we're just going to run down uh, to here. I'm going to set this one here. The scenarios here, the, this maybe just helps gear how the system's going to give you different prompts. Um, it's not locked in uh, time. I'm just going to uh, choose home um, for this one. Now, because I had all the other access points plugged in, um, these actually already showing here ready to um, adopt. I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to show you how to manually do the process, which would be how you add ones in uh, later as well. So I'm just going to skip this. Now, in this instance here, this would be if you have an Amada router and you're going to add this in because the um, hardware controller actually controls the router as well, not the other way um, round. So in this instance, you choose which router you had and then you can configure some of how the internet connection is going to work. How is it going to pick up IP addresses and everything? So this is our starting point. We don't configure in the router. We configure in the controller. The controller pushes the settings once we've adopted the router in there, which is a similar process to how we would do the access points. Okay, so uh, now we're going to have a, a network name. This is our wireless network name. Let's call this the sort of geeks. Give it a simple password. All right, this is the one that's going to be viewable um, and your users are going to be able to connect their devices on it. You can come back and do guest Wi-Fi later on. Guest Wi-Fi is another ID that you can have on there and put some restrictions on it. I'm not going to give you all of the bits of how to do everything on this. I just want to show you the key ways to how to get this set up. All right. So this is uh, your administrator name. And this one is actually quite important. Um, this is going to be um, how you log into the device locally. So there are two options. And we're going to look at both of those ways. You can log in locally. Um, and you can log in via um, TP-Link Cloud. The TP-Link Cloud has an advantage um, because it means once it's linked to that, you can actually access it um, from wherever you are in the world as long as the um, controller has internet connection. Um, but what you put in here, you also want to make a note of because if you manage to mess up your cloud access, this is your only uh, local access. So we'll just call this the Tech Geeks. You can do whatever you want in here. All right, and then this is going to be what um, information is going to be set on each of the devices. When we adopt them, uh, they're going to have a username and password that the system's going to manage and keep control of. All right, and so um, we just need to make it choose what that is and again make a note of it, although you can come back and change this later in the controller. So I'm going to call this the Tech Geeks. You're probably seeing a bit of a pattern here. All right. So we now have the option to link this to our TP-Link Cloud. So head on over to amada.tplinkcloud.com, all right, and create yourself an account. All right, we'll show, I'll show you what that looks like um, once we've got through uh, some of this here. So we're just going to choose login and bind. Um, this is now going to connect us here uh, to the controller, and we'll come back and have a look at that. Uh, in a few minutes once the controller is set up. And now it's got all the information it needs to essentially go and set up the controller. While this is just setting up, just give you a little bit of information. When you do power off the controller and start it back up, it can take about four to five minutes to actually um, reset itself and actually boot up. So do give itself a little bit of time and when you've got there. You can now also manage this and actually do stuff um, directly from the app as well. Now that you've got this going, you can get the app to control connect to the controller. So this here is our local password. We can actually now use our cloud password if we wanted to as well. So essentially we have created two users with the ability to log in here. So we're just going to log in as the local user um, in this instance. You don't have to set it up with the cloud and you can make it completely isolated. It's going to run you through a whole bunch of screens that's going to help you orientate with everything that's in here. I'm just going to quickly jump through these um, because they're probably there for you to explore somewhat yourself. But I'm just going to show you where we need to get to for some of the final settings um, that I like to do to get this controller um, neat and running. 
So you have options here uh, for running an update on the controller. I'm not going to do that right now, uh, mainly from the fact that um, it will then sit there for a few minutes updating and I don't really want to do it. So this is our dashboard and this will show us um, things like who's created in the system, how many sites we've got, um, how many uh, devices we've got in these different categories and this will build as you add devices in there. What I'm going to start with here is going to settings all right um, and with inside settings here this is uh, a lot of what we'd actually created before as we walked through which we can come back through and make changes if we want to we can turn the leds off for all of the access points if we want to or you can individually do them i think i'll show you that as we probably go through in a minute um, and there are a few other options that you can um, enable in here if you want to um, i'll probably our starting point if you haven't got a, a router um, then the wired network, network security and a whole lot of those bits are not relevant because those are only there if you've got a TP-Link Amada router and it's adopted into the system. Um, so we're really just interested in our, our WAN at the moment, our WAN, our wireless, all right, this is what we created. Um, so this is where we can go and make some changes if you want to change the password or enable a guest network. Um, you've got options to change some of the settings, hide the SSID and things like that, rate limited if you want to. So those are some of the bits down that side. Now we're interested for me in the controller. You can rename it. All right, do you need daylight savings um, running? If, it's, uh, if you're in a daylight savings area, then you can obviously set that and the offset. Do you want to change the IP address or keep it static? Um, we leave this on DHCP normally. You can set a mail server up. So if you have um, an email account and you want this to send you alerts, then you're going to put your settings. Maybe if it's an Office 365 account or something, you probably end up having to put 45587 uh, 5, as the port number in there and smtp.office.com, I think it is. Enable, enable SSL and give it authentication, which will be your username and password for your email account. But that will allow that to do password resets and a whole bunch of other information. All right. Now, um, the device doesn't really have any board, might or very limited onboard um, storage, um, but you can enable this to keep a track of the history of um, uh, all the devices that are connected, which I like to um, set on here because I think it's a, just a nice um, way of um, keeping track of what's actually uh, happening. Um, on here again, it's host names. Do you want the host names to change? If this is going to go into a final network, that will probably change. So I like to just um, set that um, to what it needs to be. You can change the ports if you need to um, on here. All right, and do a few other bits and pieces. Um, so let's just um, save that up. All right, so we're just going through some of the basics. Your cloud access here. Um, I've noticed a few times that I've done this as the start. It doesn't always log in and connect, but you can see it shows there as connected um, and what it's actually connected as. All right. And so if I if want to just give you an idea of what this uh, is, I think that would have actually just allowed me to go uh, to open that in a new tab. If we go up to um, cloud and we've actually created, this is not the password and username we created for the local user. This is our cloud ID. So if we just copy these details in here, um, and actually log in, all right, then you will actually find in here um, the controller that we've just created, all right, and here it is, Spinal 2. Um, and if we were to just click on this button here, it'll actually launch that controller just the same as we've got in over here and all the same settings, but I could be out on the internet or something else like that. So it is a really good option to actually have this bound um, to the controller, um, to the cloud. It's a really useful um, option there. Then let's look, head in to maintenance. As you can see, it's got a small amount of disk space in the device, so it can do um, the logging and everything you want to. I like to turn this on to 24 hour. That's my personal uh, preference. Um, and I'm just gonna save that. All right, you can, oh, didn't expect it to do that, but anyway, let's try again. All right. Um, you can down here. Um, choose what you're going to do for backups. Um, you can export it to a local file now if you want to actually have that happening right now and create a backup. I'd suggest once you've done that, it's worthwhile. You can import from here if you want to. Um, you've got a few other options for rebooting, um, checking for hardware, for checking for the upgrade. Um, that's where you manage that. In migration, uh, if you want to migrate um, from some of the other sites, um, sites from another controller, 
So uh, this concept have a concept of sites, which you can see up here as a default. You can create new sites as long as the, they can see the controller. So maybe you've got a granny flat with an access point in it, you want to separate it out. Um, then you could create that as a separate site in here if you wanted to and manage it separately. So you can export that config and re-import it if you want to. And then if you uh, want to put a USB key uh, into the back of the device, then you can tell this to auto backup if you want to, and it will actually either save a file to FTP, or if there was a um, USB in there, it would allow you to save the um, backup regularly as well. So that might be something worthwhile considering. So that's my basic run through of what I like to do to get this controller right. Like I said, a lot of these options here are probably not relevant for me to go through, but they're there if you're actually going to have um, an Amada um, router in the system as well. This next one to look at is um, admin. So you can see our cloud user and you can see our local user. The great thing with this is we might have some friends and family or some other people that we want to administrate this unit as well. We can either give them a local user or we can choose cloud. All right, and uh, we, if they've got a cloud account, we can choose what access they have. Um, and this will send them an invite to adopt it um, into their uh, cloud and then they would see it in a list uh, here as well. So often if this has been set up by the tech geeks, you'll actually see uh, us in there so that we can remotely access and help you with support if needs be. So then having a look at dashboard, uh, just a basic orientation, all of our devices here, like I said, will be shown here. Um, we've got stats for what's going on, a map. You can get your floor map in here if you want to or to do your topology. Um, so you can put a map in um, and uh, put your access points in there if you want to um, so that you can see how they're laid out. Uh, clients in here will show you the devices. I'll show you a device connected in a minute. Um, devices will do in a moment. And then we've got some of the logging to show you what's been going on on the device itself. So let's have a look. So if we hadn't plugged anything in, there would be nothing showing in here. As we add new access points, um, they need to obviously be plugged in the same network segment and they will find the controller and then they are sit literally will be sitting here waiting for something to happen. And all we need to do is click on the pending, click adopt. All right. So we're just going to repeat this as we go down the list, uh, telling each one of these to adopt. What's happening now is it's adding it to the controller. Um, and then from the controller, the control it's picking up the config um, for those access points. We created a single wireless network. And these are now all picking up that one called the Tech Geeks. All right, and now they will all be broadcasting that. So they're what you've got these wired out through your property, and now there will be one single uh, network. Now these do support what is called um, wireless mesh. Uh, mesh is the ability for these devices to talk to each other without a cable between them. Uh, you still need to go through this full uh, setting here first to get it uh, adopted. Then I could disconnect one of these. It will go into an isolated um, or non-connected mode for a moment. You'll need to make sure either you've got the power pack plugged into it or a PoE injector uh, with a cable, um, but just that's for power only. And after a few more minutes, it will then find another access point to be able to communicate back through and obviously won't have to have a cable back to the switch to work. So we can highlight one of these, for instance, like this, and we can go over to config here. And I'm just going to call this AP1 for reference. Um, but you might choose to put this as bedroom two or media room or whatever, so you can recognize them more easily. You've got local settings here for being able to turn off the LEDs if you want to and make a whole lot of advanced uh, changes here, which I'm not going to go through uh, today. The whole idea is really just to give you an example of how to actually get this um, up and running in a basic um, format. All right, so we've got that going here. We'll just get this one done as well. Um, and I'll just get this uh, outdoor one with a name so it's easily referable. All right, so we've got these all. So they will, uh, you have the option in due course for those to push configs to them, like they'll upgrade their firmware as needed. Um, you can locate them if you need to as well. It will often make the beacon, the light on it flash so you can figure out which one is which um, if you're not sure. Um, so 
Uh, there is quite a few options, like I said, that you can go through on here, see which clients are connected to it. The, the config goes right the way through for uh, different radios that you can set, whether you just want this running in different frequencies or all enabled, um, advanced options in there if that's your thing as well. And manage device, this is probably one of the easiest ones. Forget, if you're trying to get rid of this now and you want to remove it from the system, you can choose forget. When you hit forget, it will actually um, factory default it and remove it from the controller and you can move it somewhere else or whatever you're wanting to do um, with that. So why don't I just use my phone now? So I'm just going to use my um, phone here quickly um, to uh, find uh, the wireless network that we've just created. Um, hopefully it will just be here in a minute. There it is, just going to connect to that um, and we'll just give my phone a moment and then it will actually appear in clients once I get some data um, going through it. But really that's probably the simplest run through. We've just added four access points, really simple, quick and easy. Uh, nothing really massive that's needed um, to do that. The controller is um, set up. It's not happy for me to join it at the moment for some reason. So let's just, it may be just because it's just finishing provisioning all of these um, devices. So we'll just give it a moment, see whether my phone can connect. Um, if not, we'll go and double check our settings. Um, and it's possible I've just changed the password. So let me just go on here and forget this network. All right, now let's hopefully join it again. It's going to ask for me the password let's just try and see if that will allow me to join this time if you again you've forgotten what you've set up remember we're going to go to settings and we're going to go to wireless networks and WAN all right and we can find the password that we've set here all right my device is actually connected because I got the password wrong just going to quickly tell it to go and uh, check some email um, and now we can go to clients and in a moment, here we go, here's my device that's connected. We can see what's happening with it. We can see how much data it's transferred. And if we click on it, we've got options uh, in here uh, in config that we can rate limit. We can give it a name, so I might choose that as Paul's iPhone and now I can identify it every time it connects. Um, I could rate limit it, tell it that it can't do certain things as well. So hopefully that's just a run through. I just wanted to show you how to get the controller online, how I find that IP address, um, how I actually set that up so that it's uh, simple and easy, how we join it to Amada um, Cloud. So again, once it's in Amada Cloud, just that reminder that you can just choose the launch and this will actually do wherever you are. You can use this from the app to do it. You can use it from a web browser. Um, as once you've logged in, this is now going to be able to log you to your controller as long as your controller is online. Remember from scratch, the controller takes four or five minutes to boot this PoE powered. Um, and the great thing um, with that, though, is that once it's running, it's on all of the time. It doesn't need to be turned off. And now in our dashboard, we can see we've got four access points running and some clients there as well. So hopefully that's been a useful run through. Head on over to our YouTube channel. We've got plenty more uh, videos on how to uh, do uh, things with many of the other um, TP-Link products as well. So why don't you head over there, subscribe and stay up to date.